So let's get started in today's lecture. We are going to talk about the rise and fall method. And also we are going to talk about the leveling mistakes and errors and how to correct to correct these errors. Finally, we are going to talk about one of the applications for the leveling process, which is a profile and the cross section leveling. First, in order to understand the rise and fall method, first we need to understand when we are going to have a rise. So in case that I'm going to uh, uh, start a uh, leveling process and all the points higher than the previous points, for example, the point A higher than the point B, the position of point A higher than the point B, and then the position of the point C higher than the point B, and so on. In this case, we are going to say that we have a rise. In case of a rise, the, 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 the difference between the, um, uh, the, 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 the height of the point is going to be higher than the previous point. We call this rise. Similarly, we are going to have a fall. In case of a fall, the position of point B is going to be lower than the position or the height of point B is going to uh, lower than the height of point A. And the position of point C is going to be lower than the position of point A, and so on. If you have this case, you are going to say you are going to have a fall. Okay, so either to have a rise or a fall. In most cases, you are going to get rise and fall. Sometimes this point is lower than that point, and sometimes this point higher than that point. So in this case, I have a fall and another fall and another fall. Here I have a rise and here I have another fall. Okay, most cases you are going to have rise and fall. So why we need to understand whether we have a rise and fall? Because we are going to use this, uh, this concept in order to uh, understand the rise and the fall method. For in this example, we have a rise, right? This point higher than that point and this point higher of that point. So let's say that I'm going to place the instrument between the point A and the point B. Then I'm going to get backside and foreside, and I can determine the difference between these points. So the, the backside minus the foreside represent the difference between the point B and point A. So we, here we have the same line of sight. So the difference between here and here is going to give us the uh, uh, difference between point B and point A. So the difference between two consecutive consecutive points is the backside minus the foreside, for example. Also, I can put the instrument between the point B and C, and I can determine the difference between the point C and B. The difference between the point C and B is going to be the backside minus the foreside, and so on. By this, I will be able to determine the difference between two consecutive points. Okay, I can do also this here. And also I can do it there. Now, I know the level of the point A. This one represents the benchmark because if, in order to start leveling process, I need to have a benchmark. So the level of the, uh, the reduced level of the point A is known. Then in order to, de to determine the reduced level of the point B, then the reduced level of the point B is going to be the reduced level of the point A plus the difference which is the back side minus the fore side. So now the new reduced level for the point B uh, uh, equals the reduced level of the previous point plus the difference between the two points. Again, I can repeat this process again. In order to determine the reduced level for the point C, I need to, to know the reduced level of the previous point, which is the reduced level of the point B plus the difference between the two points. So I can repeat the pro process again and again and again in case that I have rise. Similarly, I can do this in case of a fall. In case of a fall, I can determine the difference between point A and point B. Okay, and the difference is going to be with a minus value because we have a fall. The, the back side minus the fore side is going to be with a minus, which means that I have a fall. But again, uh, I can do this process for all points. I can determine the difference between them. In order to start the, the, the uh, leveling process, I need to have a benchmark. So here I have the benchmark for the reduced uh, level here, right? So uh, now I have the benchmark. I need to determine the reduced level for the point B. 
So in order to determine the reduced level for the point B, I need to know the reduced level of the previous point, which is the reduced level of the point A. So now the reduced level of the point B equals the reduced level of the point A plus the difference between them. Okay. And the difference this time is going to be with a negative value minus. So this value minus that value is going to give me the reduced level of the new point, not like the fall. In the fall, we add. Where in the uh, fall, we, we subtract. Similarly, for the point C, in order to determine the reduced level for the point C, I need to know the reduced level of the previous point, which is, in this case, the reduced level of the point B. So the reduced level of the point B minus the difference between the two points is going to give me the reduced level for the point C. So this is the concept of rise and fall method. I can uh, repeat this process here and here and here. Okay. So in case of using the rise and fall method, you are going to have either rise or fall. So comparing with the height of an instrument method, we are going to replace the column of the height of an instrument with two columns. One is the rise and one is the fall. These columns represent delta H, the difference between consecutive points, two points on row. So let's apply what we understand here for this simple example. In this simple example, we have three points. We have point A, we have the TP point, and we have the station C point. We need to determine the height, uh, the height or the elevation or the reduced level of the TP and also we need to determine the reduced level of the point C. I'm going to fill in the table like we just learned from the height of instrument method. Here we have the back side. Here we have the fore side. Here we have back side. This one represents back size. And this one represents uh, fore side. Now, I need to determine first delta, delta H, the difference between uh, two consecutive, consecutive points. Okay? So this point, this difference, it could be rise or could be fall. For the the first two points, I have point A and I have the TP. Here I have the uh, back side and here I have the fore side. This one minus that one is a negative val value, which means that it should be placed in as a fall, because this value minus that value is going to give me minus value, which means this value, uh, this uh, place is lower than that place. So this one is going to be put uh, in the uh, fall column. Okay, now I'm going to start the process again because the, the first position we are, we've done with the first position, we have the second position. Again, I'm going to repeat the process again. This value, the back side, minus the four side. Again, the difference is negative, which means that you have a fall value. So this one is going to be registered as a fall value. In this example, we don't have any rise value. If you look here in the example, we have uh, absolute fall case. We don't have any rise. That is why here we have only fall uh, values. Now, like we just seen, if we, I know the difference and I know the reduced level of the previous point, then I will be able to determine the uh, reduced level for the current point. Now, the TP is a current point, right? The reduced level for the current point is going to be the reduced level of the previous point plus or minus the difference. If the difference is, 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 is a rise, then I'm going to add. If the difference is a fall, then I'm going to subtract. So here the difference is a fall, which means that the reduced level of the current point is going to be the reduced level of the pre previous point, which is this point, minus the fall. So this one minus that one is going to give me the reduced level of the current point, which is the TP. Now, what about the reduced level for the point C? The reduced level for the point C is going to be the reduced level of the TB, the previous point, minus the fall. Okay, this one minus that one came out to be 335.50. Okay, so now I finish this example using the rise and fall method. First, I need to determine the difference. Then the reduced level of the current point is going to be the reduced level of the previous point plus or minus the difference. If the difference is a rise, then I'm going to add. If the difference is a fall, then I'm going to subtract. Now look at this complicated example. Again, 
the way that we fill this table is similarly uh, to the height of an instrument, no difference. The only difference in here, we are going to replace the height of an instrument table with two columns, column for the rise and column for the fall. These columns represent the, uh, the difference between two consecutive points. So now I'm going to fill in the readings as we have learned from the uh, height of an instrument method. Now we need to determine the difference. For the first uh, setup, we started here and finished there. Then first we are going to determine the difference between this point and that point. It's going to be this reading minus that reading. So this reading minus that reading is going to give us either rise or fall. This one minus that one is the negative value, which means that we are going to have a fall. Then in order to determine, now we are going to determine the difference between this point and that point. So it's going to be the uh, intermediate side of this point minus the intermediate side of that point. And since the difference is positive, it's going to be registered or it's going to be written as a positive value in the rise column. Again, I'm going to repeat this process again in order to determine the difference between this point and that point. Uh, we're going to have the intermediate side of the point B minus the far side of the point C. And the difference here uh, is going to be uh, positive, which means that I have a rise. Now I finish from the first position. Then I'm going to move uh, from the uh, I'm going to move to the new position. In the new position, I'm going to start with the back side. So now I need to determine the difference between the point D and the point C. It's going to be the back side of point C minus the intermediate side of the point D. This value minus that value. And I'm going to put it as a rise because it's positive. Then I'm going to determine the difference between point E and point D. This one minus that one. And this one is going to be written in the uh, fall column because the difference is negative. And now I finish from this position because here we have four side. I'm going to start new position. In the new position, I'm going to start with the back side. So in order to determine the difference of this point, I'm going to uh, have the difference between the back side and the fourth side. And this one is going to be registered as a fall because the difference is negative. Now I determine all the differences between the uh, consecutive points. Now I, I'm, I'm in position in order to determine the reduced level. So now the reduced level of the point A is going to be the reduced level of the previous point minus the fall. So this one minus that value is going to give me the reduced level of the point A. Now what about the reduced level of the point B? In this case, I'm going to use the previous uh, reduced level plus the rise because this time we have a rise. So this value plus that value is going to give me the uh, reduced level for the point C. Similarly, I'm going to determine the reduced level for the point C. I'm going to use the previous reduced level, then plus the rise. OK, and here is the uh, value for the reduced level. So in order to determine this value here, I need to know the previous value and I need to know the difference. So this value plus the rise is going to give me this value. And similarly, I can determine the reduced level for the point E, the, the reduced level for the briefest point, which is D, minus the fall. This time, I'm going to subtract because I have a fall. So here I have the reduced level for the point E. And also, finally, in order to determine the reduced level for the TPM, I'm going to use the previous reduced level minus the fall because I don't have a rise. If I have a rise, then I'm going to add. Since I have a fall, then I'm going to subtract. Now we get the same result that we have got from the height of an instrument method. And of course, here we are going to have a, a, an error, OK? because this value should be as the same as that value. Also, it's very important to make arithmetic check. In the arithmetic check, we are going to use the same uh, uh, formula that we have used in the height, uh, height of an instrument method, except that we are going to add new part. The new part is the difference between the values of the rise and the values of the fall. Here, first, I need to determine the summation of the, uh, uh, of the backside. Then I'm going to determine the summation of the far side. 
and also I'm going to determine the summation of the rise and also I'm going to determine the summation of the fall and I'm going to determine the, the difference between the first and the last reduced level. Then the uh, this summation minus that summation, the summation of the foresight minus the summation of the backside came out to be 1.162. Then the summation of the fall minus the summation of the rise should be the same as this value. And finally, the uh, difference between the uh, first reduced level minus the last reduced level should be as the same as this and as the same as that. By doing this, you will be you will make sure that your calculation is correct. So again, we have a difference between this point and that point because in this example, we started with a benchmark. We started with the known point and we finished uh, at known point and we have a difference here. So what to do with that error? So we have in leveling, we have mistakes and we have errors. When the line of levels or level circuits is completed, there is usually some small difference between the given fixed elevation of the benchmark and the observed benchmark. The observed benchmark, is the, the, uh, the observed elevation is the elevation that we have determined in the uh, table here. This one, we call this the observed elevation. And here we call this the uh, given fixed elevation. So we are going to have a difference between them. As in all surveying work, when instruments are used, it's possible to make personal errors. You could have personal errors or an instrumental errors, error or natural error. Okay, which means that I ha we have a big mistake. So what to do with that? First, what does it mean by personal error in, in, uh, in leveling? The instrument may not be leveled. Remember, when we deal with the uh, uh, in a level instrument, we are going to make sure that the line of sight is completely horizontal. So sometimes if you make a mistake, then you are going to have error. Also, the position of a staff may have changed. The, the, the person who holds the staff may change the, 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 the point. Also, the entry and recording in the field book may not be correct. Some uh, people, they make a uh, mistake uh, regarding writing and recording the, the field book. Also, the staff may not be fully extended and may not be held vertical. Okay. Also, that is going to create uh, errors. We call this personal error. Also, we have an instrumental error. The, the, the permanent adjustment of the instrument may not be perfect. The internal arrangement of focusing tube may not be correct. So these uh, problems associated with the uh, instrument and also the graduation of the staff may not be perfect. Sometimes you have a mistake in the staff itself. Finally, we have errors due to natural causes. The curvature of the earth may affect the staff reading when the distance of sight is long. Maybe sometimes when the distance is too long, you may see the, the staff but the curvature of the earth is going to affect your reading. Okay. Also, sometimes we are going to have error due to high velocity. Because of the high velocity, the staff reading, we are going to have a problem with the staff reading. Okay. So here we have uh, mistakes and error because of all of these reasons. So in order to determine a staff, uh, to determine the error, we should start with the known point and finish with the known point. If you are going to start with the known point and finish with the known point, you will be able to determine the, 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 the error. In case you start with a known point and finish with unknown point, you will not be able to determine the error. If you start with a known point and finish with the same known point, again, you will be able to determine the error. So in this case, you will be able to determine the error. In this case, also will be able to determine the error, while in this case, you are not going to be able to determine the error. So it's important to realize that the amount of misclosure, the error, in leveling can only be assessed by connecting into another benchmark of known and proved value or connecting the leveling back to the benchmark from which it started. This case and this one is the that case. This case and that case will be able to determine the error. In this case, you are not going to be able to determine the error or the misclosure. When the misclosure is assessed, one must then decide 
if it's acceptable or not. After you determine the misclosure or the error, then you are going, you, you have to decide whether this error is acceptable or not. So how to determine whether the error is acceptable or not? We have this empirical uh, formula. We are going to use this formula in order to determine the error, whether it's acceptable or not. Uh, the uh, allowable misclosure or the allowable error is going to be referred as uh, by the letter E. And we have the constant C and we have the distance, the square root of the distance between the first point and the uh, last point. And this empirical equation, the value of E is going to be in millimeter and the value of C in also is in millimeters and the value of K in kilometers. Please uh, take care of this, otherwise you are going to make a mistake. The value of K should be enter in kilometers and the value of C in millimeters and the value of E uh, will, will be determined as millimeters. So the value of C determined on the higher order of accuracy, how much accuracy you want. Okay, so here in this table, we have the value of C uh, depends on the accuracy. If the accuracy of the first or order class one the value of C is going to be plus or minus 3. If it's from the first order, class 2, the value of, uh, of C is going to be plus or minus 4, and so on. If your accuracy of the third class, then the value of C is going to be plus or minus 12. Let's say that uh, the value of C uh, came out to be uh, 12. You, you are working with the uh, a third uh, order accuracy, and the total length came out to be 2 kilometers. So here we have 2,000 meters, but in the formula, you need to convert this value to be substituted in kilometers. So the value of E came out to be 12 square root of 2, which is 17 millimeter. So the acceptable error is 17 millimeter. If we get more than this value, the leveling is going to be rejected and repeated. If it's less than that value, then we are going to distribute these uh, errors uh, for the reduced levels. So let's see an example here. In this example, here we have uh, the uh, observe reduced level. We call this observe benchmark or observe elevation. And we call this the given benchmark elevation. So the difference between this value and that value is going to give me the uh, error of closure. Okay, so here the error, we have like nine millimeter. So if we are gonna say that the value of C is 12 and the value of K is three kilometers, then the value of E, the allowable error, is going to be 20 millimeter. And this value is less than 9 millimeter, which is acceptable in this case. If it's acceptable, then I'm going to start the adjustment process. In the adjustment process, two columns should be created. The first column, we call it adjustment, and the second column, we call it adjusted reduced level. Of course, for the first value, we're not going to have an adjustment because this one is a benchmark. So in the first row here, the adjusted reduced level is going to be as the same as the uh, reduced level, which is the benchmark. The adjusted is going to start from the second row. And uh, we need to uh, add the adjustment according to the stations. Each and every station, they are going to take the same value of adjustment. The first station, they are going to get the same values of adjustment. The second station, they are going to get the same value of adjustment. And the last station, they are going to get the same value of the of, uh, of adjustment. But the value of adjustment is going to be different from one st uh, station to another station. So how do you determine the value of adjustment for each and every station? In this example, the total adjustment is 9 millimeter or 0 0.009 meter. And this value should be distributed for each instrument position. How many instrument positions do we have here? We have three instrument position. The first position started here and finished there. The, the second position started here and finished there. And the last position started here and finished here. So we have three instrument positions. So the adjustment for one instrument position equals the total adjustment, which is 0 0.009 times the instrument position. If you are talking about the first position, the value is going to be 1. If you are talking about the second position, the value is going to be 2. If you are going about the last position, the value is going to be 3. And here we have the number of instrument position used. In this example, we have three instrument position. 
So this is going to be constant and this one is going to be constant and this one is going to, to vary from uh, one uh, position to another. So let's apply this formula for the first position, which is here and here and here. This is nine or this 0 0.009. This one is one, this one is three, which means that this value is going to be multiplied by one over three. And the value is going to be, uh, uh, of course, here we have plus uh, adjustment. So this one is going to be plus 0 0.003. 0 0.003 and here 0 0.003. For the second uh, position, instead of one, we are going to substitute two, which means that this value is going to be multiplied by two over three. We are going to have plus 0 0.006 and plus 0 0.006. And for the last uh, position, we are going to have plus 0 0.009. So three over three is, is one. So now in order to get the adjusted reduced level, we are going to add the reduced level plus the adjustment. So this one plus the adjustment. Here we have the adjusted reduced level. And we can do it here and here and here. And the last value, if your process is correct, the last value here should be as the same as the, uh, the uh, temporary benchmark. Okay. You need to remember this one could be positive or could be negative. Depends on this. Depends on this value. So it depends on the given benchmark minus the observed benchmark elevation. So this value could be positive or it could be negative. In this case, the value is positive. The adjustment is positive. Okay, if your adjustment uh, adjustments were successful, then this value is going to be the same as that value. This is how we make the adjustment in case that we have acceptable error. In case we have acceptable error, because sometimes the error is not acceptable. We need to repeat the uh, leveling process again. Also, I'm going to talk briefly about the one applications for the leveling. We, we, we mentioned earlier the leveling process is very important. So why the leveling process is important? Because we use this in order to, to make highways, railroads, transmission lines, pipelines, canals and sewers. All of this, we need to have information about topography. So let's say that the road is going to start it here and finish there. I'm, I'm going to construct. Uh, I'm going to construct a road which is going to start from this point and finish from that point. In order to have that level from here to here, I need to know the, the topography of this area. In order to know the topography of this area, I need to know the elevation of that area, so that either to have a cut or to have a film. For example, I need to cut this part and in some places I need to fill the, this part with soil. So this process is very important for us so that we'll be able to construct highways, railroads, and etc. Uh, in order to make, uh, in order to do the leveling process in case that we have a road, we need to have plan view and also we need to have a profile view. The plan view it means that the, the plan view of a road location is the same as if we were in aircraft looking straight down. This one is just like you are looking from uh, aircraft. Okay, it's a top view. So in this case, in order to understand this, here is the starting point of the road. Is the starting point of the road. And this one is the final point for, for the road. Here we have a benchmark. So we are going to start here. So the device was located here. This one is a benchmark and this one is the turning point. But actually, I need to know the elevation of point A, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. I'm going to place the instrument here. Then I'm going to start from, from the benchmark. This reading is going to be uh, considered as backside. This one is going to be intermediate side, intermediate side, intermediate side, intermediate side, intermediate side and intermediate side. And this one is going to be four side. Then I'm going to change the instrument again because in this place I cannot see beyond that. Maybe I have a mountain here, so I need to uh, relocate the device. So I have position two. In the position two, this one is going to be like my new benchmark, and I'm going to take backside, intermediate side, intermediate side, intermediate side, intermediate side, intermediate side, and finally four side. Then I'm going to relocate the device again in this location and start this process again. 
and this is a plan view. And here is a profile view. The profile view of a road is a side view of or elevation. This one is a side view or this one is elevation, which is a longitudinal services and are highlighted. Uh, services are highlighted. For example, we have the road or top and the bottom of the uh, pipelines. So here is a starting point and this one is the ending point and this one is a for formation level. This is the level that we want. And here we have the topography. So what we are going to do with this information, for example, we need to cut this part, okay, and we need to fill this part so that we are going to have a road with this level, doing like that. That is why leveling process is very important. So here we have example. Here we started, here we have a benchmark. The road started here with zero plus zero. We have the, the, the last point is here. But again, I need to start with the benchmark and finish with a benchmark so that I can evaluate my errors. Again, here the device has been located here. Here is a start point, which means that this value is going to be uh, a back side, this one intermediate side, and so on, up to that point. This point here is a turning point. It's going to have four sides. All of these readings are intermediate sides. Again, I'm going to relocate the device here. This one is going to be back side. All of this intermediate side, and this one is the fore side. Similarly here, the device has been located here. This one is the back side. All of this intermediate side, and this one is the fore side. That is what, how we construct roads. Okay, so in order to imagine this, yeah, you see, see, has, you see all of these readings and these calculations. We have fore side, uh, back side, and here we have fore side. Here we have intermediate side. And then I'm, when I change, the, the position, I'm going to have backside and intermediate side. Backside and intermediate side. You see, the calculation is going to be uh, a huge amount of calculation in order to go from uh, city A to city B. Okay, you can consider this as a homework for you. You can compute the errors here. We started with the known point and we finished with the known point. So you can determine all the uh, reduced level. You can determine the error and also you can determine the uh, adjusted reduced level. So here we have a profile. In the profile, here we have the line uh, from which we start the project, and here we finish the project. Here we have the topography of the area. I'm going to get benefit from this one because here I need to fill this area so that the road is going to be constructed here, and this one need to be cut. I need to cut this part, and I need to fill this part. And like that. How I'm going to determine this? For example, here we have the uh, elevation for the topography of the area. And here we have the design level. The design level is this point. So the difference between the ground level and the design level, it could be either cut or fill. In this case, it's a fill. I need to fill this area. The difference is one. So one meter here need to be filled. And I'm going to repeat this process for this point and for that point and so on. And also I need, uh, I will be able to determine the, the volume that need to be cut or the volume that be, need to be filled. This is how we do this in the reality. Okay. And also we have to do cross section. If this is the length of the road, also in the width of the road, I need to take leveling. Okay. Uh, the leveling process should be made every two, every 20 meters. So after uh, 20 meters, I need to take cross section. In the cross section after between after three meters, I need to take leveling here and leveling here and leveling here. So also, I need to make leveling in this direction, and also I need to make uh, to make leveling in this direction. Okay, because this one represents the width of the road, and this one represents the length of the road. Okay, so here each three meters and here each 20 meters. Here we have this 3D so that you can imagine the uh, the plan. This one is the plan. And this one is the profile, the length of the road. And this one is the cross section. Okay, this is how we do the big project. I'm going to stop here. I hope this lecture is clear for you so that you can understand the level.